Yeah. Cloud? I don't know. Where's the party now? It should be in cloud if you're recording. No. I just hit when I to set up the meeting, I hit like the checkbox to record it. But did you hit the show all thing so you unmute everybody and allow them to enter? And... I have to admit them into the thing. Let me know. Okay, we'll do.
Hello. Can you hear me?
Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody unmute so I can hear you? Hello. Hi. Hello, Country Meadow. Can you hear me? I yes. can hear you. Yes. And Jennifer, do you have a mic? Uh, looks like you don't have speakers. All right. Well, it's two o'clock. We're just going to get started. Hopefully, Jennifer can hear us. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, we're talking about leasing and uh, phone calls today. So um, we put together a, a training that's going to go over a lot of basic stuff, but a lot of stuff that's specific to your communities out in the Kalamazoo area. So first of all, let's go kind of one by one. And I want you to tell me how traffic is going and what issues or questions or objections you might have encountered recently that were, were new to you or that you knew to your, your traffic. Let's start with Mallard Cove. Um, so for my, okay, so we're talking about the phone greeting, right? Yeah, any anything that you've gotten over the phone that you found to be interesting or unusual? Um, well, for me, I still have kind of trouble setting up, so I'm going to say that. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I said I'm having trouble setting mine up, so I would say that for me. Setting up your phone? Yes. Oh, okay. What's going on with your phone? So, like, the voicemail, like, when I get to number four, it's not allowing me to put in a code, like, the extension code. I don't have one. Okay, and is that causing issues with prospects reaching you? Yeah, um, no, they could still answer, but they told me that it's two voicemails on there, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, I, I, I listened to a few phone calls and now we actually do have a repeat of, yes. of the same message and it's about a minute and 10 seconds before a prospect can even leave you a message. Yeah. But I would find that quite annoying. So I'll check in with IT and I'll make sure they're working on that for you. Thank you. All right, how about Country Meadow? What have you guys been encountering over the phone that's been interesting or unusual like recently? We, <clears throat> excuse me, we get a lot of leads. We get a lot of phone calls on a pretty regular basis. The main thing is people either believe that they, that they don't qualify or they do go through the process and just very few people actually income qualify. Okay, so you're getting a lot of hesitation from your, yeah. your prospects, kind of often. A lot of people, they really hesitate at that application fee when they're feeling so uncertain about whether it's gonna work out for them. Okay, and how much is your application fee? $50. And that's, is that in line with what a lot of your competitors are doing? Are you still a good deal? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. We still get some plenty, still a lot of other people, they find that a stopping point. Okay. So what do you typically say when like I'm, I'm a caller and I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to spend the $50 if I'm not, you know, if I don't have an inkling at least that it might be approved. What, what would your response to that be? I explain what our qualifications are and make it very clear what would qualify someone. And I let them know that that is a consistent rate with many other properties in the area. Okay. And you're comfortable with the sort of um, scripted response that you have to that kind of a question, or do you think that um, it could be improved? Well, I don't really go off of a script with it. I try to make it feel more like I'm having a conversation with them. But if there is like a standard response that I should give, then I'd be happy to experiment with that. Yeah, I think what, what helps sometimes with a scripted response is just to make sure you hit all of the points. But yeah. if you put this question often enough that you feel like you're able to hit those points while still staying casual with it, then I'd, I'd say that would probably work best for you. Yeah. So aside from the people not, they're sort of hesitating over whether they would qualify or not, are you getting any other kind of common objections or um, common questions? 
Not really so much. A lot of people really want to come down for tours and we don't have many options available for touring right now because we're, I wouldn't say we're really working off of a wait list right now, but we're turning these apartments and getting people into them very quickly. So that's kind of, some people are like, oh, but I really want to see it first. That's the only thing that really comes to mind. Well, that's a good problem to have. Do you have um, virtual tours available on your apartments.com listing or on your website? Yeah, we have Zumper and we have it on the Princeton website. We have the uh, the virtual 3D tours. A lot of people aren't really comfortable. I get a lot of people who aren't really computer savvy and they don't really want to do that, but it's a better option than nothing. Yeah, absolutely. All righty, well, this is good to know. Um, and we're just going to jump into it. So can anybody see the screen that says leasing in the phone call? Is that on your screen? Just see you. Just see me. Share screen too. All right, how about now? Yep. All right, cool. So preparing for the phone call, what is on your list when you're sitting down and you're starting your day and you know that the phone is gonna ring, what do you prepare and bring to your desk or bring near the phone? To have available to help you on the phone call. Perfect. Let's see, Jennifer's got a guest card. Um, what what are your must-haves though? I want to know from, from, from each of you. So let, let's start with, with Mallory Cove again. What's your must-have when you sit down at the phone? What do you find the most helpful? Um, for me, I have like the brochure right here, and then I also have um my little notes that I have. Okay. And what do you find helpful about the brochure? The brochure, I could just look up and then kind of base it off that. And then off, it's little notes on there that I look at too. So most of the questions that people are asking are like literally on the brochure. So. Okay. So it's, it helps with like frequently asked questions yeah. and kind of basic community information like amenities and apartment features, stuff like that. Yes. All right. Cool. Um, Country Meadow, what do y'all get together when you sit down at the phone? Yeah. I like having a notepad and pen with me so that I can take notes that I'm going through so that I can, you know, reference stuff to be able to talk back to them about what their questions are. Okay. And Jennifer, I, I know you like your guest card, but is there anything else that you make sure you have when you answer the phone? I think you're muted. I think you're muted. Can you unmute? Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm camping in the floor right now, so I can hear you better. <laughs> Dedication. Um, yeah, so basically just my pricing sheet and my, um, if we have any specials or anything like that, my special sheet and, um, of course, my guest, my guest card, so. Okay, cool. So we're going to go through all of the tools that we think if you have all of these together, you're, you're unbeatable. There's not a question you won't be able to answer. Yeah. So um, first one is a blank guest card so you you want to ensure that you have all of the information or at least most of the information that is available to fill out on the guest card especially if you're booking an appointment for someone to come in and tour the property or if someone stated that they're going to be applying online you want to make sure you have all that information on file so and using that guest card having it there by the phone actually it does a lot to help keep help you take and keep control of your conversation Right. So if you if you worked your way through the name and the contact information, your prospect starts to get off track, you can kind of bring it back because you know that you need to find their preferred move in date, their apartment size, if they have any pets, all that good stuff. Next item that we're going to want you to have with you by the phone is current availability. And this is, you know, if you don't know it off the top of your head, um, you, you should work towards knowing it kind of by heart, especially if you're at a property where you're, you know, full or you're waitlisting mostly. So knowing by heart when you're soonest available is going to be for each floor plan. So when someone calls you, you can answer confidently. Um, like when's your first one bedroom coming available? Well, that's going to be available next month on the, you know, whatever the date is. Having that immediate information, whether it's off the top of your head or whether it's right in front of you, the confidence translates and, and your prospect picks up on that. And they think, wow, these people know what they're talking about. And you're also going to want to have your future availability. So any units that you have, on notice over the next 60 days or whatever your community's notice to vacate policy is, 
um, have that information as well for that prospect that's always going to call and is going to ask about something two to three months away. Um, we want to make sure that we confidently and as quickly as possible can, can speak to that. And the other thing that you're going to want to have with you is your schedule for your touring. So if you have apartments that are available to tour, um, have your calendar up at all times when you pick up the phone. That way you don't have to put prospects on hold. You don't have to say, um, or, you know, let me check or, you know, any of that stuff, you know, immediately what could work for you and them. And so it's kind of all about confidence and, and providing answers quickly. Um, and that, that really helps your prospects uh, build that relationship with you. That's necessary for you to close on them, especially over the phone. And phone greeting. Does anyone have a scripted standard phone greet that they use whenever anybody picks up the phone at their property? Mallory Cove, what's yours? Thanks for calling Mallory Cove. This is Destiny. How may I help you? Awesome. Country Meadow? Thanks for calling Country Meadow. This is Gordon. How can I help you? Okay. Jennifer? Thank you for calling Kendall Manor. This is Je Jennifer. How may I help you today? Cool. Now, where, how do you think that that ranks amongst phone greetings? Like scale of one to 10. Mine is about a seven and a half. Yeah. Okay. So the phone greet is, it's your caller's first impression of the community, of your attitude, what kind of service they're gonna receive, all that good stuff. Um, and it's also your chance to stand out from the competitors. All of those phone greets are better than most of what our competitors are doing, right? Most of our competitors, they don't answer the phone or if they do, <laughs> they don't give you their name. They don't, they'll just say, you know, community name. And that's what a lot of prospects are getting. So by stating your name, the community in a helpful prompt, we're, we're doing the, the, the sort of the bare minimum to exceed our prospects expectations. So if we can do at least that, we're, we're really, really good. But I would like you to consider um, creating a statement phone greeting or a corny greet. Um, it's, it's, it's one that um, is very common. I, I used one when I started in this industry in student housing. And my phone greet was, thank you for calling Monarch 544, the coolest place to live in Conway. This is Dylan, how may I help you today? And that's a lot, but it's also memorable. So that's something that I want you to consider um, and call around, call your competitors, call, properties that are triple, quadruple the price, call properties that are cheaper and then figure out what people are doing and, and create one that's better. Um, and, just, and just work with your, your area director to determine what's best for your community. What is everyone's thoughts on that? Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, cool. So um, probing questions. Oh, looks like we've got Whitehall joining us. Yay. Hello, Whitehall, can you hear us? All right, they'll get back to us eventually. So probing questions, has anybody heard of a, a probing question before or heard it referenced somewhere? I have it. Okay. So a probing question is used to give you the information you need. You're sort of probing your, your caller to release the goods, um, whether it's a preferred move-in date. You know, so when you ask your probing question, it's sort of your best tool to understand their stated needs and their preferences and, and really understand if you're able to meet those stated needs and preferences. So it actually helps you speed things up, um, even though it's giving your, your caller the impression that you were just super interested in their search and you want to ensure that you can find the, the perfect fit for them. So it does, it's a double-edged sword. It saves you time and it provides the prospect a better experience. So I recommend that you create a list of probing questions um, based on your availability, based on um, callers' stated preferences and based on your community's strengths. So a probing question based on availability um, might be, you know, we do have some apartments that are move in ready and would be eligible for some current leasing specials. Then your question comes in, when is the soonest you would be looking to move? And then that gets your caller thinking about the specials, that you have something move in ready, and that you want them to get the best deal by taking advantage of the leasing special. 
So that's just an example. If you want other examples, I'd be happy to work with you based on your availability and what kind of frequently asked questions you're getting from your prospects to create that list. Um, but it, it's super helpful to have, especially when you encounter a balloon of silence. Um, how many people get get calls from prospects and they just it's it's like they only thought of one question and then as soon as you answer that question they just kind of go like dead in the water, and then you, you kind of have to pick it up from there and say, you know, it, having your list of probing questions gives you something to just immediately fill the void, immediately eliminate that balloon of silence and steer the conversation back towards you getting the information that you need to close on them. Make sense to everyone? Yes. Anybody have an example of a probing question that they might ask? What was your planned move-in date? Okay. Jennifer, I'm going to pick on you again. What was that? What is an example that you might have of a probing question that you could ask? Whether it's to overcome a balloon of silence or whether it's to get more information from your prospect. So how soon are you looking to move? Um, we, we definitely have availability for you. Um, That's good. <laughs> That's good. Do you, and do you have some phone calls that you can play that? <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't have a way to, to share uh, recorded calls, but I could definitely find some examples. And, and if, if, if you wanted to, we could circle up um, one on one. We could create a list of probing questions for your community that could be helpful. All righty. So moving on from probing questions, if we don't have any questions on those questions. Uh, first things first. Um, you need to get your caller's name and their contact information and you need to use it throughout the call. Um, who, who does this consistently? And it's okay to be honest. All right, Kendall Manners on it. It's, it's not common. And again, this is about standing out from our competition. Um, when, when I call an apartment community and they verify my name, my contact information, um, it, it feels good. And when they keep bringing my name up in the conversation, I'm like, oh, I'm not just a number to these people. They they care about my search. This they they provide good customer service. Um, it, it's their kind of their first glimpse into what it's like to live at your property and to interact with with your staff. So, you know, one of the easiest ways to do that is when as soon as you get on the phone with someone, hey, in case we get dis in case we get disconnected, is the number you're calling from the best number to reach you back at? You all have caller ID, right? Yes. All right, cool. So that shouldn't be an issue. Um, and then when you confirm your prospect's full name, their first and last name, that gives you the opportunity to one, know their name, and two, use it throughout the conversation. Um, something that could look like, um, you know, well, Jennifer, uh, our, our property here offers blah, blah, blah. Um, and it really puts your prospect in a good mindset and helps you build the rapport um, needed for them to trust you, right? They 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 need to trust you in order to you know book an appointment or to submit an application online. So now qualifying questions. These are essentially going to be those spots on your guest card that have stuff like unit size, budget, move-in date, pets, occupants, lease term, ad source, all of that good stuff. And it's best practice that you want to get these out of the way before you give pricing, because you know we know best when it comes to our community and what we offer. And a prospect is just going to want the price. And if your price up front for your one bedroom isn't what they were looking for, they'll just hang up and they'll, they'll find a way to get out of the call. But if we get all of this information from them, even though they might not have considered a different floor plan or a different move-in date or et cetera, we would be able to sell them on that if we have this information in front of us. Even if you know we don't have that one bedroom they were looking for, we might have a two bedroom available now with a leasing special on it that's very comparable. You know, So getting all this information really before, before we state price and give them the opportunity to get out of the call um, is absolutely key. Do you ever encounter any hesitation 
from someone to give you this information or did they ever just pressure you just to to um to just give me pricing just give me pricing has anybody ever heard that what do you typically do in that case you just give them pricing you don't want to annoy them um no i'll, I'll keep annoying them <laughs> can i at least get, get your email address i'd love to send you some information i've got a video brochure i've got i've got everything that you need that you can you know look over i mean if things change i mean it's there for your you know for you and let me at least get your first name, you know, um, can I have any, like an email? And is, I, when you have caller ID, is this a good phone number for you? You know, like I'll keep on, <laughs> but. Well, that's good. And if you're comfortable doing that, then power to you. Um, but if, if you're not comfortable doing that, um, I would say push back once, you know, if somebody says, why are you need all this information? I just want to get the price. Well, to ensure that we're providing you the most accurate information and uh, a, a total picture of what we offer, I, I do need this information just so I know what's relevant to your search. Um, and if they give you any more pushback, I would say just give them the price uh, because we're, we're not here to set a bad, have a bad experience, right? It could be a good experience for a prospect knowing that we bent the rules for them a little bit. You know, it, it goes to the building that rapport and then that relationship. So example, uh, your prospect calls and is looking for soonest availability for a one bedroom apartment. Um, now I know a few, of, a few of you don't have one bedrooms available, but you do have two bedrooms. So instead of saying we don't have a one bedroom available, say, okay, I'd be happy to help you with that. I just have a couple of questions for you first, just to make sure I'm you know, getting the full picture of your search. And then after you've asked those questions, you can see, oh, their budget, their budget you know, is applicable for a two bedroom too. And then you're able to sell the value of your two bedroom, close on your caller schedule, a tour, get the application. Would you have been able to do that if you had just given them pricing up front for their one bedroom or had said that it's not available? Likely not. Um, they would, they would kind of really have to be, it would have to be on them instead of on you to pull that information out. So that's just an example. Selling the value of your community. So, the value as it relates to what's valuable to your caller. You know, what what sort of, what calls have you gotten recently, Mallard Cove, that what's important to your caller? What kind of features are they looking for um, that you're able to sell the value of? Um, a lot of them are looking for two bedrooms, but they're looking for more, like a lot of space. And then they're also looking for dishwashers. I don't know what it's, that's about, but... That's okay. what and and you have dishwashers in your units, right? Yep. And then also in they want air conditioners, but we have it in wall, so that helps too. Okay. Um, so that would be that would definitely be speaking to the the values or selling the value of your community would be bringing bringing back up the fact that your prospect, your caller has stated this is important to them. This is something that we can offer. So we have you there. Um, like, and this gives you the opportunity to sort of feature benefit sell. So future benefit selling is if they're looking for a dishwasher, you can say, hey, we absolutely have that dishwasher. That's great. That the dishwasher is the feature. And then the benefit is you'll never have to wash dishes by hand again when you live here at Mallard Cove. So has anybody ever done a little bit of future benefit selling on the phone before? I think we all have. I just think we're putting words to it now. So who has another example of a feature benefit um windows um there's lots of windows for natural lighting um plenty of closet storage space um yeah i mean there's plenty of things okay country meadow um what kind of feature benefits do y'all have central air and heat is a big one here yeah yeah people That's don't really expect to hear about that one and then dishwashers are people ask about that a lot. Okay. So what kind of benefit do you sell to the feature of central AC? They have complete control over their climate. Perfect. Um, does anybody in this group have or offer carports or covered parking? We have covered parking. Okay. So what kind of benefits do you sell to the feature of those covered parking spots when you're speaking about them? 
well, I kind of do like in the summer, if it's hot, you don't want to get into a hot car, especially if you have like leather. And then if it's cold in the winter, you don't want to walk outside and have to brush your car off all the time. That's great. You're 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 um getting kind of both seasonalities of it. So I think that's that's good. So future benefits. Are, are we good with this? Does this make sense to I think it sounds like it's something that we're already doing. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions on maybe a feature that they've not been able to sell the benefit of or are curious about? Yeah. All right, we're gonna move on. Closing. So who asks their caller to apply online or schedule a tour every single time? I give them the option to apply online, but I don't like tell them they have to, you know. Certainly. So asking for the close is very different than telling someone to go on and apply online. Um, but we do need to ask for it. Um, so best practice is, you know, unless they've stated, you know, in a movable objection, like I'm allergic to brick or, you know, something like that, or they've otherwise disqualified themselves, you know, they're saying, oh, I don't, I'm worried about my credit or, ooh, I don't, I'm worried about, you know, meeting the income requirements or if they've told you they have a rental, um, you know, history, something, they have disqualified themselves. Unless either of those two things have happened, we need to ask them to apply online or schedule a tour to come and stop by our community and look at our apartments, if we have one available. We need to be asking for it every single time. Um, and if you don't have a unit available, um, I think what uh, Country Meadow was talking about doing, providing your caller with your virtual tours via you know, zumperapartments.com, photos on the Princeton website, virtual tours there, um, that, that's really helpful and it kind of helps guide them towards your application. That's where your application link is. So, and, and you can still take a more friendly slash casual approach to doing this instead of just, you know, acting like a thirsty salesperson saying, hey, will you go and apply online? Um, you, can, you can make it more casual. You can, by offering them directions, parking information, uh, reminding them that they must bring a valid government issued photo ID. You know, you, you could say friendly reminder, you know, we'd love for you to stop by, uh, make sure you bring a credit card with you to complete your application. Um, and that's, this is an inference. And I think that's a really, a really strong way to ask for the close while still remaining uh, sort of casual and friendly um, going towards that rapport that we're building with the prospect. Does anybody, would anybody be uncomfortable phrasing that this way or in asking every single uh, leasing call to apply online? Cool. So who has heard of the assumptive close and who uses it? Can you say that again? Who has heard of or who uses the assumptive close? Reading it, I feel like it's happened before, but I didn't know that it was happening. Yeah, same. Yeah. All right, I figured. This is a strategy that a lot of us fall into, you know, just because it leans into the casuality of it. Um, we don't want to, we don't want to um, change their experience where they're feel where they're feeling like they're meeting their new friend. We don't want to suddenly make it business, and I get that. So the assumptive close is probably the easiest one. Um, so the assumptive close is essentially when you, as the agent, um, assume that your prospect or your caller loves what they're hearing or they're seeing, and they want to apply and schedule a tour. So a, a good example of that is you're on the phone with a caller, and they've expressed interest. You know, you, you, you meet their stated needs, and you say, well, it sounds like this apartment is, you know, meets all of your needs. I'll go ahead and email you a link to submit your application. When would you like to stop by and take a look at your new home? That's you just assuming that they're gonna close and they're going to apply. And this also gives them the opportunity to correct that narrative if, if they don't intend to apply. They will usually tell you, oh, well, I'm still looking or I'm just, you know, my preliminary searches, but you will pull that objection out of them that you might not otherwise get. So the assumptive close, super duper helpful. And it lets you know where you stand with your caller before they walk out the door. All right, inferring urgency. So who has a current leasing special? All of you? Mm -hmm. All right, 
So how do you use your leasing special to infer urgency? Can everybody give me one example, starting with um, Mallory Cove? Um, well, for the people that's been a, like coming in, just asking for applications, I'm kind of telling them like, if you come in before the 31st, it's free rent until September. Okay. That's good. Country Meadow? Yeah, that's a good one to get people to follow through because we have a lot of people kind of dragging their feet, bringing in the documents we need, and that gives them that sense of urgency. Okay. So you're inferring urgency to um, speed up the process of you know, leasing and, and screening. That's good. Yeah. Jennifer, what are you doing to infer urgency with your leasing specials, or how do you find it most helpful? Um, we have availability for you, and we have great specials going right now. Um, would you like to uh, know more about that? Okay. So your releasing specials are definitely um, your best chance to infer urgency because they're not normal. They're specials, um, and they're not something that you typically do. So... And a good example of inferring urgency with your leasing special is sort of, you know, we definitely want to encourage you to apply online, take advantage of the current leasing specials. I love that phrase, take advantage, you know, when you're talking to a caller about your leasing specials, because it puts them in the mindset that this is a good deal. And this person that we're building rapport with, that we're building a relationship with, wants me to get a good deal. Um, so I always like to incorporate the phrase, take advantage of our leasing specials when you're selling and inferring urgency with them. Um, you could save X amount of money by applying today versus applying when we are not offering specials. Um, and that starts that conversation that, that'll have your caller ask you, well, what, when is the special ending? Um, and whether you know that or not, this sort of gives you the opportunity to infer even more urgency. Okay, so who has inferred urgency using their um, desirability or full occupancy-ish? Country Metal, you said you did a lot of waitlist leasing. Do you ever speak on the fact that your community is so desirable that, you know, a lot of apartments are rented, you know, sight unseen and they don't last long and, you know, make sure you go and apply before they're gone? Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of, we've had quite a bit of interest in this specific unit, but no one has put any money down yet. So the first who was able to follow through with all of that is who gets the unit. Okay. So this unit is there, there's only one available, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the only one of its unit style? Yeah. Okay. So I think you have an incredible opportunity to infer urgency there. You yeah, know, this this style is so desirable. This is the only one available, and it's, they never last long. Um, and with our current leasing specials, I mean, you have every opportunity to infer all of the urgency there. Um, so I think a good example or a script of something that you could use would be, you know, our community is quite desirable. These apartments don't last long. They're often rented sight unseen. So if this sounds like it could be a perfect fit for you, we encourage you to submit your application online to ensure you get a home here. Kind of leaning into the desirability aspect of it. Yeah. Who else has a good example of how they infer urgency using their availability? Mallory Coe, you got one for me? Um, I kind of have a whiteboard over here and it, it has like, it shows everything that's available right now, but I only put two for each. And if I have two available, Make it like it's not a lot, but it's only like four. And that's a good practice um, to not overwhelm um, your caller if you have a lot of options. Um, ha having only two that you present and, and, and talk about does help narrow it down. So that's good. Jennifer, what do you do? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. So I just. Uh, we have, uh, I just say they're going fast. Um, I would like to reserve something for you today. That's great. That's, no. uh, that, I think that's a mix of asking for the close, assumptive closing, and inferring urgency. 
So not really good with these Zooms. I just get in the zone whenever somebody comes in or calls and it just goes from there. So I don't, I have, I have so many ideas, but I just can't really put it out there, so. Certainly, and I think, you know, that, that helps build the rapport with your prospect and sort of build that relationship kind of based on casuality, friendliness. Um, I think that's really good. All righty. So what we talked about today was taking control of the call and all of the ways that we can do that. So having your prepared list of qualifying and probing questions, your guest card, um, your materials and tools, so you can take advantage of balloons of silence. Um, remember to always bring a conversation back toward how your availability may meet their stated needs. Um, and, and not how their needs might not work with your availability. So if your caller starts talking to you about things that are off topic or personal, not related, politely steer them back towards scheduling a tour and leasing an apartment. Vocal and tone inflection. Um, this is not a big issue with your, with your communities. Everyone does a pretty good job of sounding nice and happy on the phone, but everyone has those days. Best practice is to smile when you speak. Um, you might look a little odd if someone walks by your window, but you're gonna sound happy and this is gonna translate. Um, prospects really do notice when you're engaged and you sound happy. Um, it makes them feel like they're not as, not, not as awkward, you know, more friendly, more, more personable. Um, and on the flip side of that, if your tone inflection is not good, or if you're, you know, tired or you're just not feeling it, that can damage, really damage the phone call. It kind of sets the whole tone of your conversation. So um, definitely, definitely keep that in mind and try and make it as consistent as possible. And that's why I think the phone greet is a good opportunity to do that. So if you have a, a corny or a statement phone greet, um, it'll force you to kind of start that conversation on a happy and upbeat note as a representative of the community. So definitely think about that. And to use your marketing tools. So remember to let your caller know that they can visit the Princeton website. They can take a look at any of the um, virtual tours or high resolution photos that we own that are available on the website. And they can also take a look at all the virtual tours, high resolution photos, community photos of all of the advertising sources that we have, whether it's apartments.com, rent, Zumper, uh, we're paying for them. So make sure that we make sure people see them. So. As Country Meadow was saying, they like to direct people towards their Zumper listings for their 3D tours if their prospect is tech savvy enough. And that's a great example of that. So remember fair housing laws. You should have a scripted, if not standard, response to common gotcha questions. One of those questions includes, what sort of people live in your community? Are there are a lot of young people, are there are a lot of old people, you know, what's the vibe? Um, Mallard Cove, what is your response to this kind of question typically? Anyone who completes an application. That's very good. How about Country Meadow? Yeah, anyone who is qualified to live here is welcome to live here. Okay, Jennifer, same for you. All right, so, we should polish it up a little bit and make it consistent. Um, we came up with, you know, an answer to that question. We are proud to lease apartment homes to anyone that wants to live here and is approved after applying. So I think, you know, but whatever your response is, make sure it's consistent and make sure it's sort of leans into our high level customer service, okay? Um, and if you have any questions or if you get a, a fair housing, um, question from a, a caller or a prospect that you hadn't gotten before. And if you don't have an, an established phone read, um, put that caller on hold, call the area director, call marketing, we'll help you out. Um, and then remember the guest card. It is so crucial. Um, when you're wrapping up your call, you ensure that you have all of the information on your guest card filled out or all of the necessary information filled out. So if your caller is unsure of their desired move-in date or their budget, um, you can note, you can notate unsure on the guest card and just keep the conversation moving. Um, but at wrapping up the phone call is the, the great time to make sure that you have all the information you need on your guest card that you keep by the phone. Who has 
who has seen the telephone techniques guide that was created by Princeton a couple of years ago. It's a strip of paper about maybe this big and it's kind of sized to go on the side of your computer screen. Does anybody have one of those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have one, I don't think. But... Okay, I'll make sure you get one. So I'm going to follow up after this meeting um, and I'm going to send an e-copy to everybody so everybody has one. Um, take, a, take a few minutes to review it, print it out, make it available to you by your computer, by your phone, uh, and let me know if there's anything that you want to add to it or let me know if there's anything that you think is a bit extra and not necessary. We're looking for feedback. Anybody got any questions for me? None? I see Randy joined us. Randy, do you have any questions? I do not. I was listening to this conversation like a podcast. <laughs> I'm driving from one property to the other. So I did not have any questions. I, um, I know that we have handed out the sheet that you were just talking about. There may be some people that have not received it. So attaching that at the end would be nice. Um, and I liked the overcoming of maybe challenges of, let's say, Kendall Manor doesn't have a dishwasher, but to speak on other positives of the size of the unit and et cetera. Absolutely. Randy, have you heard any um, objections or weird questions from prospects recently that uh, took you by surprise or you thought were interesting? I have not personally. Um, I think we have a good grasp or uh, at least our own versions of the we accept anybody who applies and meets our criteria to live here. Um, so even if you're wording it slightly different, um, anything like that would be great. Uh, some properties you'll hear the, um, are there children above me because I don't want children? And we all know that you can't be like, oh, I've got the perfect unit that doesn't have any kids. So I think we're doing a pretty good job on that. Okay, good. Well, I'm here to help, marketing's here to help. If you think of anything or if you encounter any weird objections or any weird questions or any gotcha questions, um, that you want to polish up your answer for next time. Reach out to us, reach out to Randy, Adrian. Um, we'll be here to help. But if nobody has any questions, then I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. I'm going to follow up, make sure everyone has the telephone techniques guide, a copy of this slideshow. And we'll go from there. Let me know if I could be of any help. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. You too.